How much solar power do I need? It's one of the most frequently asked questions by homeowners that are looking into a home solar power system, but the answer is, it depends. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you some of the factors that go into properly sizing a solar power system so you can make sure that you're getting the right system for your needs. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we do product reviews and comparisons on solar panels, batteries, inverters, uh, pretty much any piece of technology that makes up a home solar power system. We also do short educational videos, like today's video here, where we're answering the question, how much solar power do I need? Or how many solar panels do I need? Now, I wish this was an easy answer and I could just say 20, 30 panels, but the reality is it depends. Uh, and it, it depends on a lot of different factors. Now, when you're looking at sizing a solar power system, the first step should always be needs analysis. And this is why we always say all professional selling starts with needs analysis. And this is absolutely the case in solar. So that needs analysis will typically include looking at your current usage, uh, and then considering any future plan changes to your electrical usage. Uh, for example, are you planning on installing a swimming pool? Uh, are you planning on buying an electric vehicle, right? And if so, are you gonna be charging that electric vehicle at home? Um, these are all questions that should come out during the needs analysis process so that we have an idea of what our target kilowatt hour production needs to be. Uh, and that's a key point here. When you're designing a solar power system, the, the question you need to be answering here is how much total energy, kilowatt hours, does the solar system need to produce for me over the course of the entire year? So it's not just a matter of what's the instant wattage, what's the max power wattage I need, but it's what is the total amount of energy measured in kilowatt hours that the system needs to produce over the entire year. Now, there are gonna be several factors that, that factor in here. Um, one is, what is the weather at your location? What's the irradiance at your location? In other words, how much sunlight hits your property over the course of a typical day or over the course of the year? And this is gonna vary a lot based on where you live. Now, I'm here mostly talking to United States audience. And so if you live in a, an area that's very sunny, like Las Vegas or Phoenix, you're gonna get a lot more sunlight hours per day or per year than somebody living in New York or Chicago. Right, so first it's just, it's just a factor of how, much, how many hours of sunlight does your location receive each year. Then we also have to look at your particular property. Which direction is your roof oriented? And are there any other, other factors like nearby trees that might cause some shading losses during certain hours of the day? So all of that's going to factor into the model that we use to provide an energy production forecast. And that's why it's so important that you use an accurate modeling software. The one that we use here is Aurora Solar. If you haven't seen our previous video, go back and watch our previous video. I believe it's entitled, How Many Solar Panels Do I Need? Where we actually show you the process of doing the design and doing the production forecasting uh, using the Aurora Solar software. Now, ideally, if, if you're watching this and you're in the United States, ideally what you're looking for is a south-facing roof with little to no shading. However, we have to work with whatever roof surfaces the house gives us. So if south facing is not an option, or maybe we, we need more space than what's on the south facing roof, we might start with the south, and then if any additional solar panels are needed, we'll use the east or the west facing roof after that. Uh, of course, we wanna look at areas that have minimal shading, and, and of course, your, your aesthetic preferences are gonna play into that as well. So let's say the south facing side of your house is the front of your house and you, you just don't like the look of solar panels on the front of your house, then we may have to put the system uh, or the solar arrays on the east and west side of the house, which may mean we have to use one or two extra solar panels because we're not gonna receive as high irradiance as, as many sun, sunlight hours per day as we would have if we used the south side of the roof. Now, another question you wanna ask yourself is, what is your goal for the solar power system? Uh, is the goal just to get the best dollar for dollar payback? Uh, or is your goal to be totally energy independent? 
maybe just for philosophical reasons or maybe, maybe for emergency backup reasons, you wanna make sure that you have enough secure power that you can last during a blackout. And of course, another question that you need to ask is, what is your utility company's solar buyback program? Now, there are still a few markets in the US where they have a, a true net metering buyback program. And what we mean by that is, if, let's say your system is producing, you're, you're at high power output during the middle of the daylight hours. Whatever electricity your home does not need to consume right away, you can sell it back to the power company for credit. And then during the evening hours when the solar is not producing, you can just draw off those credits that you earned during the daytime. So the best solar buyback programs are what we call a one-for-one -one net metering or an NEM 1.0, which means that you get full credit. Any energy units that are sent to the power company during daytime, you can pull them back at full value at nighttime. However, the, the trend we're seeing now in 2024, led by California and now many other states, is that the utility companies are not offering you a full solar buyback, which means that you can't, you can't necessarily assume it's gonna be a one-for-one -one trade back and forth. In the case of California now, it's more like a four-to-one rate. So you have to send them four kilowatt hours for every one that you get to pull back. So in order to combat this, what many people choose to do now is to install batteries with their solar power system. Now batteries add to the cost, but what they allow you to do is to bank your own energy right there at your home. So during daytime hours when you're in peak solar production, whatever excess electricity your home doesn't need right away gets charged into a battery or a bank of batteries and then that way you have this energy here stored at your home that you can draw from at nighttime. So you don't have to really pull from the utility at nighttime. You just pull from the battery. And then the next day, the solar panels take over and recharge the battery. And you can repeat that cycle as many times as you need, essentially turning the power company into the electric provider of last resort. So if your goal is to get the best dollar for dollar payback and you're in an area where you, your utility does not offer a full buyback, then you may need to look at adding batteries with your solar power system. Uh, in fact, if, that, if that's you, make sure that you go back and watch our videos uh, on the top five solar batteries, uh, just to give you an idea of what's out there and which might be the best fit based on your situation. Anyway, all of these factors should come out during the discovery process. So if you're working with a solar professional or a solar salesperson, these are some of the questions that they should be asking you uh, during the discovery process. Uh, and of course, they should be using a good, accurate solar design software to model out the system so that all of these factors can be taken into account when they give you the production forecast. Typically, any solar proposal is gonna have a production forecast of this is how much energy this system will produce over the course of the entire year. Now, if you're in the process of getting bids and getting estimates, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have one or two and just need to get a comparison, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. You can set up a call with a solar expert, and we'd be happy to get some pricing and some information over to you. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from these solar surge videos that you're watching, make sure you hit the thumbs up button uh, and also hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with solar surge. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.